In this video, I will describe how to use calculus to sketch the graph of polynomial functions. To do so, as an example, we'll sketch the graph of f of x equals 4x to the third plus 12x squared minus 3. To sketch the graph of this function, we will use calculus to identify some important properties of the graph, including the critical numbers, which are places where the first derivative equals zero or the first derivative does not exist. We will use those critical numbers to identify intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. We'll then identify extrema, which are maximum and minimum points, peaks and valleys in the graph. We'll identify using the second derivative possible points of inflection, places where the graph could change from being concave up to concave down or vice versa. We'll identify more specifically intervals of concavity, where the graph, what interval the graph is concave up and concave down on. And we'll identify points where the graph changes inflection. Let's begin. Step one in sketching the graph of this function is to use the first derivative to find critical numbers, intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing, and extreme values, places where the graph of the function has a relative maximum or minimum value. We'll find the first derivative and then discuss in detail how to find each of these three properties of the graph. The first derivative of polynomial functions is very easy to find. Basically, we'll just use the power rule on each term in the function. The derivative of 4x to the third plus 12x squared minus 3 is, by the power rule, 3 times 4 is 12x squared plus 2 times 12 is 24x to the first power. The first derivative of our function is 12x squared plus 24x. We'll now use this to find the critical numbers. Critical numbers are places where the first derivative is equal to zero or where the first derivative doesn't exist. This first derivative, 12x squared plus 24x, the domain is all real numbers, so the, the first derivative does not have any values where it doesn't exist. Critical numbers will only come from places where it is equal to zero. What I'll do to solve this equation is rewrite it in factored form. The only factoring that can be done with 12x squared plus 24x is a common factor of 12x pulled out to the front. And whenever you factor 12x out to the front, you're left with x plus 2. And then I'll set each of these factors equal to 0. 12x equals 0 means that x is equal to 0, one of this function's two critical numbers. The other factor, x plus 2, when set equal to 0, yields x equals negative 2. So here we have two what are known as critical numbers of the function f of x. We will use these critical numbers to find the next two things on the list, intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing, and extreme values of the function. The two critical numbers that we just found, x equals 0 and x equals negative 2, break apart the domain of this function, which is all numbers, into three intervals. One interval is from negative infinity to negative 2, another interval is from negative 2 to 0, and a third interval, 0 to infinity. And a property that critical numbers have is that these intervals that they define, the function will either be increasing throughout the entire interval from negative infinity to negative 2 or decreasing throughout this entire interval. From negative 2 to 0, the function will either be increasing over the entire interval or decreasing over the entire interval. Same thing from zero to infinity, either increasing over the entire interval or decreasing. We can identify whether the function is increasing or decreasing in each interval by choosing a value in the interval. So for the interval negative infinity to negative two, I chose the, a value of negative three, and I'm going to substitute, I'm going to evaluate f prime of negative three. I'm substituting negative three or any number in the interval between negative infinity and negative two into the first derivative. And actually, I don't really care what the actual value of f prime of negative three is. I just want to know whether it's positive or negative. 
f prime of negative 3 is a positive value. And actually, every number in this interval would yield, would yield a positive number if you were to substitute it into the first derivative. And because it's a positive number, that implies that this function is increasing over the entire interval from negative infinity to negative 2. The function is increasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 2. I have this written here in, in interval notation. What about from negative 2 to 0? Is the function increasing some more, or is it turned around and is it now decreasing? Well, let's choose a value between negative infinity or negative 2 and 0. A value between negative 2 and 0, negative 1, is, is the only integer between these two critical numbers, so I'll choose negative 1. And again, I'll substitute that into the first derivative. Don't really care what the actual value is, just whether it's positive or negative. And in this case, negative 1, along with every other x value between negative 2 and 0, yields a negative number in the first derivative. This implies the function is decreasing from negative 2 to 0. Again, the function is decreasing on the interval from negative 2 to 0. What about on the last interval created by the critical numbers, 0 to infinity? Let's choose a value in this interval. We can choose 1 or 2 or 100 or a million. Every number in this interval will yield either a positive, the same signed number, either positive or negative, when substituted into the first derivative. So when you substitute 1 into the first derivative, you're going to get a positive number. Again, it doesn't matter what it actually is, just whether it's positive or negative. And this implies that over the entire interval, the function is increasing. This function f of x is increasing on the interval from 0 to 8. So here we've used the critical numbers to determine intervals where this function is increasing and decreasing. Now, let's talk about extrema. Extreme values are places where the graph has a peak or a valley, a relative maximum or minimum value. And in this function, you can see that from negative infinity to negative 2, it's increasing. And then at negative 2, it reaches a high point, and then it starts to go down again. This means x equals negative 2 is a relative maximum value. Relative maximum value. So what I'll do is I'll substitute, uh, a, I'll describe the relative maximum value with an ordered pair. The x value is negative 2. And to find the y value of this relative maximum, I'll substitute negative 2 into the original function f of x. I'll evaluate f of negative 2, and that yields 13. When you substitute a negative 2 into f of x, f of negative 2 is 13. That means a, this is an actual point on the graph. That's a high point in the graph, a peak in the graph, a relative maximum in the graph, negative 2, 13. Now let's think about what's happening at x equals 0, the other critical number. The graph is decreasing in the interval before x equals 0 and then increasing after it. This implies that x equals 0 is a minimum value, a relative minimum value. So there is a relative min at x equals 0. What's the associated y coordinate that we'll sketch when we draw this graph? That would be f of 0. We'll substitute a 0 into the original function, which yields negative 3. 0, negative 3 is a point on the graph where there's a low point. The maximum and minimum values, known as extrema, can only occur at x values that are critical numbers, places where the first derivative equals 0 in a polynomial function. Now at this point we've talked about all we need to know about the first derivative, and now we're going to move on to using the second derivative to find some other important parts that we will use to sketch the graph of this function. The second derivative can be used to find what's known as possible points of inflection. We'll use those possible points of inflection to determine intervals of concavity and then actual points of inflection. What I'll do is again, I'll find the second derivative and then discuss what each of these three things are as we find them. The second derivative of a polynomial function is, again, fairly easy. The, the derivative of 12x squared plus 24x is simply 24x plus 24. And possible points of inflection come 
from x values where the second derivative is equal to 0. So we'll take 24x plus 24, set it equal to 0. We have a, a simple linear equation here that will have one solution. Subtract 24 from both sides of the equation and divide by 24 to find that x equals negative 1. This is known as a possible point of inflection. It's a place where the graph could change from concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. We're going to use this possible point of inflection in a very similar manner that we use the critical numbers to determine the intervals where the function was increasing and decreasing. The possible point of inflection, x equals negative 1, breaks the domain of the function apart into two intervals, an interval from negative infinity to negative 1 and another interval from negative 1 to infinity. Now over these two intervals, the graph will either be concave up or concave down over the entire interval. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a value in each interval. So for the interval between negative infinity and negative 1, I'll choose a, a value of negative 2. But I could pick negative 3 or negative 100, any value between negative infinity and negative 1, and substitute that into the second derivative. Again, I only am concerned with whether the result is positive or negative. In this case, f prime prime of negative 2 is a negative number. 24 times negative 2 is negative 48, plus 24 is negative 24. I only care that it's negative, though, and that the fact that it's negative implies that the function is concave down over this interval. The function will be concave down at every x value between negative infinity and negative 1. I'll then choose a value between negative 1 and infinity, like 0, um, and I will substitute this into the second derivative. And again, I'm only concerned with whether it's positive or negative. f prime prime of 0 is a positive number. And that implies over this entire interval from negative 1 to infinity, the graph is concave up. So I've now identified the intervals of concavity. The function is concave up from negative 1 to infinity. And it's concave down from negative infinity to negative 1. These are known as the intervals of concavity. Because the graph changed, because I, I see here that our function is changing concavity at x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1 is known as a point of inflection. That'll be an actual point that we plot when we sketch this graph. We'll be plotting the point when x equals negative 1. If, to find the y-coordinate of that point, we'll evaluate f of negative 1, and that value is 5. So negative 1, 5 is the only point of inflection that this function will have. At this point, we've gathered all the information we need to pretty accurately sketch the graph of f of x equals 4x to the third plus 12x squared minus 3. Let's start the process of sketching this curve by plotting the points that we found. When you use this process to sketch the graph of a function, you will have identified some points, some maximum values, minimum values, points of inflection. In this case, we've identified one maximum value, one minimum value, and one point of inflection. Depending on the complexity of the polynomial you're graphing, there can be more than one max, min, or point of inflection. We've found three, though, in this case. So what I'll do is I'll begin by, on, on the screen here, plotting those three points. So you can see that I have the three points plotted on the screen. By themselves, they don't really tell us much about what this function's graph will look like. They, they seem like they're kind of lined up in a straight line, but, but we don't yet, without using the other information we found, we, we can't sketch the graph through these three points. What you may find useful, although this is optional, is to plot a few more additional points. And when I say additional points, I usually choose, if I want to draw the graph accurately, a point to the left of all of my points. So the lowest x value I got in my max, min, and point of inflection was negative 2. I like to plot an additional point that is less than that smallest value. So I chose negative 3 as an additional point to plot. And negative 3 comma f of negative 3 is the point negative 3 comma negative 3. And one point to the right of the highest x value that I found in the important points. 
So negative 2, 0, negative 1, the highest one is 0. I'm going to plot an additional point that has an x value of 1. So evaluating 1 comma f of 1 yields 1, 13. So those are two additional points that I'm going to add to the coordinate plane on the screen. And those will, again, help me draw the graph a little more accurately. Now, what else did I find out as I went through this process? I found in intervals where the graph was increasing and where the graph was decreasing. I found intervals where the graph was concave up and concave down. This function was increasing from negative infinity to negative 2. That means from negative infinity until negative 2, the graph is going to be going up from left to right. It's going to pass through the additional point that I've plotted, and it's going to be increasing. The graph is also increasing from 0 to infinity. So x equals 0 is right here. From x equals 0, which I have a point, 0, negative 3, the graph is going to be going up the rest of the time from 0 to infinity. As it increases, it's going to pass through this additional point that I've plotted. The graph's going down from negative 2 to 0. So the whole way from negative 2 to 0, the graph will be decreasing, which makes sense when you look at the three points that I've plotted. The graph will be concave up. It will be concave up from negative 1 to infinity. From negative 1, starting here at negative 1, off to infinity, the graph will have a concave up shape. It will be concave down from negative infinity to negative 1. So before negative 1, it will always be concave down and look like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way from left to right through each of these points that I plotted and draw a graph that is the shape based on, it's a shape based on whether the function is increasing, decreasing, or concave up, concave down. Let's think about the graph from negative infinity to negative 2. From negative infinity to negative 2, the graph is increasing and it's concave down. It's increasing and concave down, just like that. So here's a curve, a section of my final graph that's increasing and concave down. It goes through this additional point that I've plotted, increasing the whole time, concave down the whole time. How about from negative two to negative one, this next little piece? From negative two to negative one, the graph will be decreasing. Look, I found that it's decreasing the whole way from negative 2 to 0, so it, is, it will, of course, be going down but through all three of these points as I connect these three points. But it's definitely decreasing from negative 2 to negative 1. And what's its concavity? Well, it's still concave down. It's concave down the whole way to negative 1. So I'm going to draw a curve that's decreasing and concave down, decreasing and concave down, just like that. How about from negative 1 to 0? From negative 1 to 0, it's, it's going to be decreasing. It's decreasing the whole way from negative 2 to 0. So it started at negative 2. It went down. It's going to be going down some more. It's going to decrease as, it, as I connect these two points. How about the concavity from negative 1 to 0? Well, it's actually concave up for the rest of the domain of this function. It's going to be concave up from negative 1 to infinity. So between these two points, it's going to be decreasing and concave up decreasing concave up. The rest of the graph from 0 to infinity, from 0 off to infinity, it's going to have the same shape. It's going to be increasing from 0 to infinity, and it's going to be concave up the, the entire rest of the time. It's actually concave up from negative 1 on. So starting at 0, I'm going to draw a curve that's increasing and concave up. Because I plotted this additional point earlier, I know an, another point that it's going to go through, so I'll draw a curve that's increasing and decreasing, increasing and concave up that passes through the point I found earlier, 113, and that finishes off the graph of f of x. So what we've just done is use the first and second derivative, used calculus, to sketch an accurate graph of the function 4x to the third plus 12x squared minus 3.